to Gapology Radio with your hosts, Mark Tinas and Brian Brockhoff. This is your leadership development podcast where they share unique insights with the purpose of helping leaders achieve their greatest potential. You can learn more by reading their books, Gapology, Imbar, and Speed of Purpose, or by participating in one of their workshops. All of this and more can be found on their website, gapology.org. Hey everybody, welcome to Gapology Radio. As a reminder, our flagship book, Gapology, is available as an audiobook on Audible. So, if you prefer listening over reading, the audiobook is a great way to get fully up to speed on the methods described in our book. Plus, you get to hear my beautiful wife, Julianne, read the parts by our central character, Maddie. <laughs> An extra bonus for sure. Also, we'll be taking a little break here on the podcast to work on some projects and teach a few workshops. I would like to invite everyone to go back and listen to our earlier podcast from the season, including our most recent series, Designed for Individual Contributors. And then stay tuned for later this fall when we'll return with brand new content. But for tonight, we're breaking away from Gapology a bit to share some awesome news about my partner in crime, the genius behind Gapology, Imbar, and Speed of Purpose. So let's go ahead and get things rolling with Mark Tinas. Hey, Mark, how's it going? Great, Brian. How are you? Good, good. I am so excited about tonight's podcast. I'm excited to dive into tonight's topic. Um, this is something very different than what we normally talk about. And our listeners may know if they follow us on social media, which I would invite everyone to certainly uh, subscribe to us on uh, LinkedIn, Facebook, uh, Instagram. We're on all those platforms. But uh, for those of you who haven't, I'm proud to share with our listeners that Mark Tinas, Mark Henry Tinas, is an, now an author of fiction. Mark's actually put his writing skills to work in a brand new way with a novel entitled Unraveled, the DNA Kill Switch. So congratulations, Mark, officially. Well, thanks, Brian. I'm excited that you're excited. <laughs> yeah, you can feel it in my voice, can't you? Yeah, that's a big deal. Yeah, yeah. Wonderful. I well, appreciate it. Yeah, and, and you may not remember, um, but when you sent me, a, an, it was a super early draft of really just the first chapter. Um. It really blew me away, and I knew immediately I wanted to read more. And I'll tell you that uh, the the listeners on this podcast will really enjoy it um, in reading the whole book. Um, it takes twists and turns, and um, it's a really great work of fiction. And, and it's actually a bit foreshadowing to some recent uh, announcements. Uh, <laughs> that yeah, we've seen that's on crazy, the isn't it? Oh my gosh! Yeah, it was crazy when. When you sent me that text, let me know about uh, some announcements by some of the members of the U.S. Security Council. Um, but I thought we could take a little time on today's podcast and dig into this a little bit. And you can kind of just, we'll just chat a bit and you can just share it with us uh, some things about Unraveled. What do you think? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. So uh, would you like to give our listeners kind of an overview of the book without giving away any secrets? Yeah, so Unraveled, the DNA Kill Switch, uh, is about uh, DNA, obviously, but it's about the U.S. government gaining the capability of terminating DNA sequences. And because that happens, political corruption sets in and a number of other things. And uh, the story twists and turns. And Unraveled takes multiple meanings, by the way. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think you will enjoy it. I took a big risk in that I started the book with chapter one being almost the end of the book. So it starts near the end and then weaves through and tells the entire story. And uh, it's exciting. I've read it a few times myself, but I love it. <laughs> yeah. I was so excited when it came uh, in the mail. I think I might have got my copy before you even got yours. That's true. <laughs> I made a little fun video of me unboxing the, the book. It's it's a really beautiful book, too. The, the cover is kind of a silky kind of cover, so it's a little bit different than a glossy normal uh, book that you'd see. Um, 
I just think it's beautiful. And and it, the, it'll the, be uh, it'll be available on Kindle uh, in late August. By the way. Okay. Okay. I was going to ask you about that. Yeah, uh, that come. It's on Amazon now, and uh, that's the quickest way to get it. But yeah, yeah. And the uh, publishing company they did a great job with the editing, and the the cover is just cool. It's a cool looking red cover with white letters. I, I really love the design of it. Yeah, it came out awesome. Yeah. So um, let me just ask you a few questions. So I was kind of thinking about this earlier today. So so first of all, I, let's kind of back up a little bit. So when did you decide to become a writer in general? So, you know, you and I have put together quite a few books now um, in the leadership space, um, but just taking a high level overview on just becoming a writer in general, when did you decide to do that? You know, I've been writing as far back as I can remember, mm. even as a kid. Uh, and when I wasn't writing, I was thinking about, you know, things to write and about stories and, and mm -hmm. fantasies. Um, I, my, my great grandfather, I think I've told you this, uh, was Steve Gillis. And Steve Gillis was uh, a best friend of Mark Twain. And they lived together. And I sort of grew up understanding that and visiting their home um, years after, you know, they were gone. But uh, and hearing the history of, of Twain, uh, my great grandfather was with Mark Twain when he wrote his first big book, uh, The Jumping Frog of Calveras County, and became famous at that time. And uh, so it's always been part of my heritage. And my name, Mark, was given to me by my parents in honor of Mark Twain. So it's always been sort of part of me to think of myself as a writer. And uh, I had some natural skills there and and just love to do it. It's like sport to me. <laughs> yeah, and, and you are excellent at it, that's for sure. It's definitely uh, part of your DNA, which is actually part of this uh, new book is, is all about DNA. Yeah. Excellent so that, tie there. Yeah, yeah that, that just occurred to me. That's interesting. So, so shifting um, ahead a few years after writing uh, Gapology, Imbar, and Speed of Purpose, um, what made you decide to jump into the fiction world? Well, I've I've been fascinated by DNA and by biochemistry since probably the eighties, uh, when DNA really the technology around DNA changed and the um, the use of DNA changed, and it, it's always been something that I was fascinated by. And I began to study biochemistry and DNA so that I would uh, know, you know, quite a bit about it. In fact, the book, I don't know if you uh, remember this part, but it has been reviewed by a biochemistry professor at a prominent university in the U.S. And uh, he believed that the, um, the plot around DNA was quite plausible. So although it was science fiction, uh, he said, you know, this, this makes sense. So that, that's good. So I, I didn't want to stretch too far and create something that uh, could never come to pass. And uh, it sounds like, uh, you know, we've done that. But so it's, it, the book is not only a science fiction novel, it's a love story. And it's uh, laced with political intrigue and corruption as well. So it, it, it fits a lot of different things. And it twists and turns on purpose uh, to keep uh, the reader guessing. But uh, I, I think you'll, you'll really love it. I, um, have you got to the end yet? Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Of course. I had to read it right away. Yeah. Yeah. That's <laughs> awesome. Yeah. It's a great ending. Um, and I, I wasn't even expecting it at all, how it kind of turned out. So sometimes I kind of can guess books ahead of time and uh, I'm like, okay, this is how this one's going to end. But this one really did, uh, catch me off guard a bit. So, yeah. And I think that some of the characters in there are so rich. So, um, I love the whole idea of, um, Cooper and Angel, who are the, the two primary characters and, and Cooper's dad, Jonas, I, I just love that whole relationship thing there. And just kind of thinking on my, my childhood with my dad and that kind of thing. Um, you know, I could really relate in a lot of ways. 
And I just love the, uh, the characters, especially POTUS. I mean, uh, that, what a great character that it was. <laughs> love that one. Oh yeah. Yeah. One of the things that I, that I did and for others that are, that are writing or aspiring to write, I created, um, uh, character DNA in essence, um, a, e- each of the characters is very consistent in their behavior, their way of speaking, um, th- throughout the entire, the entire book. So I tried to develop, you know, very specific and, uh, understandable, uh, characters and, uh, they, they, they come to life nicely in the book. Yeah. I think our readers can identify with at least one of the characters because they are so diverse and unique uh, characters. And I think a lot of readers out there will be able to identify with at least one of them. So, so yeah. excellent job there. So, yeah. Um, so where, where originally did the idea for unraveled come from? Um, I started thinking through my study of DNA, you know, what were the possibilities in the future? In 1987, uh, back then was when DNA was used in the criminal justice system and body, body, bodily fluids could be converted to the DNA sequence and they could solve crimes that way. That, that wasn't discovered until 1987. So DNA research and um, the entire uh, science around it is fairly new. So I, I was just dreaming about what could be and what the downside could be. And uh, I came up with, uh, with Unraveled. And uh, that, that's where the, the plot came from. Now, the, the most ironic thing, if I can go ahead and tell everyone now. So the book, was, the book was scheduled to be published around the first week of August of 2022. And in the final week of July of 2022, um, the week before the book was going to be published, and Brian's, Brian referenced this earlier, I'll give you a little bit of the detail. Jason Crow, who is a member of the U.S. Intelligence Committee, he is a congressman from Colorado, in a news conference stated that the Chinese government has been gathering the DNA sequences of U.S. military and is working on the capability of uh, using the sequence to kill people. And uh, so that's frightening. But uh, the book Unraveled was uh, about unraveling the DNA sequence of, of individuals. So the premise, in essence, of Unraveled was uh, brought to plausibility in the week before it was published. So you talk about the irony of that. I thought I was writing total science fiction, and unfortunately, it could be could be science fact. So r- read it and get ahead of it. But uh, that uh, that news conference, which Brian and I viewed on uh, on video a couple times now, is uh, pretty amazing. Yeah, absolutely. When you sent that to me, I was actually out of town, and I pulled it up on my phone, and I could not believe it. It, it blew me away. I'm like, oh my God, I, cause, because I kn- you know, knew you're writing this. And, and it was just incredible that it actually is uh, somewhat true, you know, possibly. So uh, I, so, I had so never even heard anyone speak about that no. um, while writing the book right. uh, or, or prior. So I, I thought that, you know, the premise of the book was, was totally original, which it is, but um you know, I guess that's how things go. Right. Uh, you know, sometimes things that are viewed as science fiction become fact. Yeah. And uh, anyhow, m- more to come on that. Again, his if you want to see the video, it's Jason Crow, Congressman from Colorado, U.S. Intelligence Committee news conference in late July. Yeah, it, w- it was an amazing interview. So, so how long ago did you actually come up with this idea? Start writing, starting putting down, you know, notes on this. Yeah, so my methodology uh, on writing is to begin with a storyline and then lay it out in in a sequential fashion and then begin making notes by 
what might become chapters in the future. And I started that in 2015. So it literally took seven years to put together. It's not a simple process. Um, I tend to write on weekends and or I'll write in the evenings uh, and or I'll make notes throughout uh, the week if something occurs to me. But it, it, it took a long time. Um, obviously, we did a number of other things in the, you know, in the, in the interim there. Um, I, I don't want, I didn't want to push myself or create an artificial timeline or deadline, I guess. I wanted to write as uh, ideas for the storyline came to me. And that really served me well. Um, I came up with a number of chapters I'm sure that you were totally blown away by and that were unanticipated uh, in the in the you know in the sequence of events mm -hmm. yeah absolutely and the, just the the clarity of the locations and and that kind of thing um, and I know you're very familiar with some of those locations um, but I, I found those things the, those pieces to be very interesting and yeah so I, I know that takes a lot of time to come up with all that yeah, I mean, you bring up a good point, though. So um, when I talk about Lawrence, Kansas, where one of the characters lives and comes from, um, and he's walking down the street, um, he's walking down an actual street in Lawrence, Kansas, and he's walking by actual businesses and restaurants and and clubs. And when one of the characters uh, is vacationing in, in Maui, um, we're right there with them. Uh, the streets, the walking trails, the beaches, the restaurants, etc. So I, I, although a book is, this book is fiction, it, it's very real. In, in terms of the locations and the reality of, of what you're seeing. And I, I think that's incumbent upon a writer to bring reality uh, to, you know, to, to the reader. So I, 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 I just love that, mm -hmm. the detail, you know, I, I love that. Uh, and as a, as a, you know, a leadership or a business, you know, writer, you know, we deal with, you know, facts and details that are, that are real. And I wanted to bring that to, to fiction as well. Mm -hmm. In our business books, um, that element of, of detail and facts, I, I know that's something that's very important to you when we're writing our business uh, books as well. Cause I, I know how, how sequence and timing and, and all that stuff uh, is super important. You know, things have to tie together um, you know, where they build on top of each other. And I know that's an important part of our, our business books. And, and I could ab absolutely see that same thing in the structure of the, of this book. Yeah. So each of the locations that's referenced in the book, I have, uh, been there. I've stood there. I've mm -hmm. looked at it. I may have photographed it. I've taken notes on it. Um, the locations are very real. Yeah. And again, that's on purpose because I think that brings credibility to fiction. Mm -hmm. It makes it, it makes it very real. So. Right. Right. Yeah, for sure. No, I got to tell you, I, I really enjoyed the book um, and I absolutely recommend it to everyone out there and uh, we'll continue to, to post links and, and that type of thing on our social. So make sure to head on over there for, for some of that, but uh, any future book plans, anything else that you're working on? that you can share without giving away any story plots or anything like that. Yeah. So I, th I think unraveled all, although we bring it to closure. So the book does not leave you hanging. It, uh, it probably leaves you highly satisfied and uh, I, I won't go any further than that. I do think there's, there's more books to be written there and the characters uh, in uh, the star characters in unraveled can, can go forward and, and uh, there, there can be other stories. Um, we have another novel that we're we're going to begin here shortly uh, that we've been working on for some time on a totally different storyline, and uh, that'll be coming out. And then um, Brian and I have had such success with Gapology that we've taken that model and looked at it 
from different angles. And, and we've got another uh, business book that we're going to begin shortly. Uh, by, by the way, when you're looking at the, the, the author's names, uh, Brian and I write together on the business books, and I go by the name Mark Martinez. On the, on the novel side, on the fiction side, I add uh, Henry, which is my middle name, Mark Henry Tinas, and that you know distinguishes between the two. And that was my father's name was Henry. So in dedication to him, uh, he'd be very proud of. Uh, he he loved to read books. He'd be very proud of uh, of the use of his name there. So that that's how we're distinguishing between the two, and we're you know we're just very proud. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, and you absolutely should be. Um, it takes a lot to write. Any type of book and a, and a work of fiction, I think, is and it's different. I guess it's difficult, but it's it's difficult in a different way because it's it's hundred percent creative, along with your dedicated research to make you know as much real as possible. Um, so you absolutely should be proud of it, um, and I'm proud to know you. <laughs> well, thanks, Brian, and thanks for being the yeah. first to read the book. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, congratulations again, Mark. We have a nice little break coming up here, but I know we have some interesting new leadership topics that we've lined up for this fall. So, so thanks again. Thanks, Brian. Thanks, yep. everybody. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye. All right. That'll do from here. Remember that during this little break, go ahead and revisit our episodes from earlier this year. We have some great insights on many leadership topics seen through the eyes of our different books. I'm sure that you'll find conversations valuable to many of the situations that you may be facing. And for more in-depth details, you can also read our related blogs on our website, Gapology.org. Everyone have a fantastic week. We'll talk to you soon. This has been a Gapology production. Visit us at Gapology.org.